Welcome back for our episode five investigation of Off the Record. First, I'd like to apologize. I have the windows open, so if there are any noises um, in the background, I'm sorry. I think I have the microphone adjusted, so we shouldn't hear too much background noise. But if you hear a car go by or a lawnmower or something, I do apologize about that. But enough of the introduction. Let's get into the investigation. Once again, Franny has sent us a letter that she has scribbled all over. Since the news about Sebastian broke, I barely see him around the office anymore. He's clearly lying low, I think at Kim's suggestion. He still gets all his work done, though. Uh, he still gets all his work done through emails, which is kind of amazing because we're now in the thick of the campaign. Even I barely have two seconds to make myself coffee as I fly through my work so I have time to stay focused on this investigation. Is it weird I feel bad about not giving the campaign my best work? Kim has unlocked a new level of stress. She now sleeps in the office break room. She's all business, watching every dime, poll, and news item. Un <clears throat> excuse me. Unfortunately, the Val assistant got unplugged in favor of her phone charger, so that source of info is gone. TFC has had a few hairs out of place these last two weeks, too, which just makes me more curious about what he's hiding and what Ashley may be new. This may not seem like a big deal, but trust me, it is. With your help, we might be able to find out what that was. Last week, the, the Mendozas got Ashley's phone back from the police. Most of her phone information was wiped and her texts were deleted. We don't know if Ashley did that or the police, but the offline app was still installed. Unfortunately, I couldn't hard crack the app, and Reg has no idea what Ashley's password might have been. I ported everything left on her device to the KeepSafe app, so you can take a look. This is where you come in. Keep safe product. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is where I come in. Um, I'm worried about Reggie. Ever since they got back, got the phone back, Reggie's been very quiet. They don't seem quite as uh, energized about our investigation, but it makes me feel like we're not working fast enough. But I don't know what to do. With work and this taking up time, I'm not around as much as I'd like to be. I guess all I can do is keep pushing forward and make sure we solve this soon, not just for Ashley's sake, but for Reggie's too. Ashley's phone number reminded me that of one more source of information we had in mind yet, the remaining suspect's digital cloud storage. I'm including each of these suspects' texts from the day Ashley died. Some of the messages are to unknown recipients, which means one of them could have been involved in shady business or helping Ashley behind the scenes or both. As for now, as for how I obtained them, all you need to know is that I found them. Which brings me to our goal. Ashley was supposed to be meeting someone at the library the night she was killed. And she knew details about the, uh, about the campaign transaction, uh, transactions. Blah, blah, blah. So she had to have a source deep inside or intimately close to the campaign. I would bet my top row of teeth that finding out who that source is will lead us straight to the murder. It has to. Even if they're not the murderer themselves, they might have been the last person to see Ashley alive. Um, find out who Ashley was getting her information from and message me their full name on the app. The new keep safe password is Megabyte. Signed Franny with more of her code at the bottom that we don't have a solution for yet. So then, after Franny's letter, and she really, she really didn't give us anything new other than everyone's acting stressed and whatever. Um, then we get to Reggie's letter. And before I read the letter, and I know I mentioned this in the unboxing, but once again, I want to apologize for messing up the pronouns. Um, it was not intentional. It. I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. Let me. 
I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm, I'm tripping over my words now because I had something I wanted to say and it slipped my mind. Um, but just know that messing up Reggie's pronouns was not intentional and I'm going to do my best to keep on top of that. Um, hi again, detective. I hope you're weathering this investigation okay. Franny's barely remembering to shower. She's so laser focused on the case. I don't think she's sleeping very well either. The other day I saw her start to pour milk into a bowl of potato chips. Ew. I'm not in a good place myself. Reading Ashley's notes on her phone crushed me. I could picture her writing these words so clearly. Every time I remember she's gone, it feels like losing her all over again. I feel, or I lie awake at night just picturing Ashley alone in her coffin. I'm uh, making mistakes at work, and yesterday I think I made a big one. You see, Harold Richards came into the bank this week. I thought he was acting cagey, but he only wanted to access his high security deposit box. I saw in our records he hasn't accessed his box for almost 10 years. All I could think of all I could think was how unfair it is that 10 years ago he walked away from the crash that killed these two women and now he's going about his uh, business while Ashley is dead in the dirt. Then it occurred to me that whatever Harold had stashed in his deposit box might have something to do with Ashley. Once I started thinking about it, I couldn't stop. I'm one of the few employees who can reset the high security lock boxes. So yesterday at the end of my shift, I cracked Harold's open and grabbed everything inside. I tried to cover my tracks, but it's not something you can hide easily. I'm sending you everything I found, a photograph, a bow tie, a woven mask, and a few notes. I should have I should have just taken a photo. I don't know what I was thinking. I hope it's helpful because I'm going to lose my job over this. Of course, I'm ashamed of myself, but if it helps us find the murderer, I won't regret it. If I know what happened. Maybe I w uh, won't think of Ashley lying in her grave anymore. Thank you for helping me try to know, Reggie. Um, hold on. I'm just scanning over to make sure I didn't skip over anything. Oh. P.S. I'm also sending a weird bookmark from Ashley's desk. I remember seeing Ashley playing with it, playing it with these bobbleheads. And at this point, I want anything that reminds me of Harold and TFC out of my sight. And then Reggie has drawn us some more pictures because they're a very good artist. Last ep uh, episode, we had a picture that they drew of Ashley. Um. So, Reggie is the one sending us the stuff now. And I kind of think that's strange, too. I don't know. Franny hired us, but Reggie seems to be more engaged in sending things. I had a crazy thought. Now, I have no proof of this, no reason to believe it. What if Reggie and Franny are the same person? I know that doesn't make any sense because we refer to Reggie as being Ashley's sibling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's those letters that Franny writes. I just feel like there needs to be something with them. Like it's almost like Franny is typing a letter and then another personality of hers is marking them. I don't know. Anyhow, Bad thought, okay. Franny and Reggie are not the same person, and I know better than that. I don't know why I suggested that. Anyhow, so then we get to the note, and this came out of Harold's safe deposit box. Hi, Harry. Thanks for writing back so soon. Everyone else has stopped writing. Even Ma only writes me every couple of months. When I came in here, thought I'd be able to bear it easily enough. I didn't know anything. When I can't sleep, I try to imagine myself before I was in here. I think about the day I think about that day on the quad when I was doing my homework and the sky was clear and I felt like I belonged and everything was going to be good. I don't know anymore if that day actually happened. I wonder if I just made it up 
and I've really just been stuck in here my whole life. Everything feels like a dream in here. Like life outside never happened, but I know it did, and I tell myself when I get out, you'll still have my back, at least like you promised. The only thing I have to pass the time is origami. My bunkmate uh, trades me candy for folded cranes and fish and fortune tellers. I don't ask where he gets the candy from. I tell myself it could be worse, but I can't keep lying forever. Something good has to give eventually. It's got to. Please write back soon, your friend, Lewis. And then on the other side of this little note, our origami folding directions to make the fortune teller. Um, so Lewis is in jail, writing to Harold saying he hates it. Of course, that figures. Um, and then the next note that Lewis writes to Harold, Harold, clearly it's asking too much to ask my best friend to write even one letter. Do you even care anymore? I've only served half of my sentence. Five years of my life spent rotting in this hellhole with five more to go. All because of the crash. All because of a decision made by a young, stupid, cocky kid. I feel like I'm dying with my eyes open. I've had enough. You should both be thanking me. You owe me everything. But if you won't, I've got other plans. Lewis. So, clearly, Harold's ignoring Lewis. Lewis is suggesting, and the, even the wording suggests that the vagueness of the wording suggests that Lewis took the blame for them. Um, all because of the crash, all because of a decision made by a young, stupid, cocky kid. He doesn't say all because of a decision made by me. So it sounds like he's talking about somebody other than him. Um, and then the other side of this has the design on it for the origami paper and when you fold it it's the fortune teller and these pictures remember what you both owe me for the car crash or I'll tell everyone so that is what the fortune teller looks like when you fold it um, and then we get to this page full of texts and there really is nothing here. Harold talking to Judy. Harold talking to somebody unknown. Um, Harold talking to Lewis. And then Kim talking to her mom. Kim talking to TFC. Kim talking to somebody unknown. And they all, all of these messages basically end with, hey, let's go, let's talk on offline, which is, the me a messenger service, I guess, kind of like, um, instant me or messenger from uh, Apple, or I was gonna say Snapchat, but there are no photographs on there. It's just, it's just really messages, and mostly all of this stuff are just basic generic conversations that really. It would be too monotonous for everyone to have to listen to if I read all of these nothing conversations. So just suffice it to say that most of them are just everyday normal conversations that you would expect people to have with their campaign managers or with their mom or with their wives or what have you. Um, Kim had the most out of everybody. Um, but the important one to take a look at here is Lewis. And Lewis has first the big one, Lewis. Maybe cannot meet tonight at 604. Then Lewis at 605. I think I might be putting my neck out too far. And then unknown at 621. What's happening? Are you okay? And then Lewis at 622. Move to OL once again offline. Um and then that's really it. Uh, the funny thing, though. Well, then we have a message with his cleaning lady. Hello, sir. This is a reminder that tomorrow morning I start coming at 10 to clean, not 11. Yes, thank you. It's nice to come here 
It's nice to come home to a clean house every day. Very good. Thank you. But this one, unknown. Okay, when I read the second unknown, <laughs> I thought this was Lewis hiring a hitman or a cleanup through through a me this messenger app like um regarding your toilet service order do you need assistance completing the service request respond y or n and just because it was a toilet service request and ashley was killed in a bathroom like i just kept telling myself is this like some like messenger for a hitman kind of thing um and then no worries, our concierge team will be in touch with you shortly to help you schedule an appointment with the service partner. It just, when I first read it, I was like, holy cow, is that, is he ordering a hit? But no, he wasn't ordering a hit. He's really ordering someone to clean his toilet. So anyhow, the first unknown, Lewis saying he's not going to show up. He can't make it. He's scared. And the unknown saying, are you okay, is important for this. Then we get to the bookmark. And Reggie told us in their note that they remember Ashley playing with this bookmark while she was playing with the bobbleheads. And so I look closer at the TFC bobblehead and look closer at the bookmark. And if you look at at the number of letters in each word you'll notice that they look very similar so using the bobblehead to figure out what the solution for the code is and it's strong new leadership unwavering values is what the bookmark says now when i opened it and i looked at when we did the unboxing and i looked at this i said oh look a shift cipher we'll have to see what the shift is it's not a shift cipher, even though it looks like a shift cipher. It's a substitution cipher, which means the letters weren't shifted any number of spaces in either direction. The letters are replaced with different letters. And the reason that makes a difference is if I have a couple of letters for a shift cipher, I can just fill in the blanks and figuring out figure out what the cipher is. If I have a couple of letters in a substitution cipher, I still may not be able to solve the cipher. Like I, you need to have a lot of the letters in a substitution cipher so that you can start to fill in the blank on words. So anyhow, having said that, let's go to here. And this is in our, um, this is a screenshot that we were sent of Ashley's phone. Um, and these are just notes that she's taken. Uh, TFC campaign team, nothing on dire, story follow up, Harold's illegitimate child, Judith's frustration, campaign funds here too, story car crash, AS, Angel Silva, stops at an intersection of King and Condor. Saw the crash? Contact campaign for quote, reason, stop at TFC's house. Uh, we know that Angel Silva was at the site of the crash, and then we know that Angel Silva went to TFC, TFC's house as a carpool driver shortly after the crash. What isn't adding up here? Uh, reminder to self, check CCCC for leads. Reminder to self, follow up with courthouse in one week for restraining order. And CCCC is Copper Cliffs Country Club. Remind mom to take meds. Remind Reg to eat veggies for pasta. Remind Reggie, don't push yourself. Be careful, but follow your gut. Remind to self, lunch with dad Sunday. Remind to self, pick up a new e-reader. Remind to self, update OL app. And then we have a code. And using... Using... The substitution cipher that we already have, we can solve. And the code that was on the screenshot from Ashley's phone says the password is saguero. And saguero is a kind of tall cactus. Um, so that's what a saguero is. So 
now having done that, now we know what the password is, we can go into Ashley's uh, Ashley's offline portal, open it up, and now we have two scrambled names. And I'm going to read these instead of bouncing back and forth. The first one is has a photo, the AKJPQ, and it's TFC, Harold, and Lewis the night of the whatever, and you can see TFC is holding a mask. And then, so Ashley's questions are in the gray. Is that TFC? Yes. We'll explain more when we meet. We're meeting at the library, right? Thumbs up. I know it's a big leap for you to, for you to take, so thank you. It won't go to waste. You're helping Copper Cliffs. Thanks. I've had enough. I'm no pushover. People are going to have to face the truth about me. You've got a promise. You won't mention me. I promise no harm will come to you from my end. I never reveal my sources. Yeah, I've had enough. TFC can suck it hard. Screw him. I'm tired of people walking on me to get to the top. I can't say I didn't warn him or give him chances. Every single person in his campaign is rotten. They all deserve to go down in flames. I'll meet you later at the library as planned then. You can't tell anybody I told you. You have my word. Here, where are you? Hello? If you don't show soon, I'm leaving. Leaving. So, here at 754, where are you at 8? Hello, if you don't show, I'm leaving soon. Uh, leaving at 810. So this person that went to meet Ashley at the library waited for her for 16 minutes. And this was all during the time that she was killed. What was the time? It was, I don't remember off the top of my head, like 7.40 or 7.50 to 8.10 or 8.15. So somewhere in this window is when she was killed. And then there's another message thread in here. We really shouldn't be messaging on here. Even encrypted apps like this, I don't trust them. All I'll say is TFC isn't the man I believed in. Would you rather we meet in person? Yes, please, and thank you. So those are the messages in Ashley's online portal. And if you take the same substitution cipher that we used, we learned that AKJPQ is Lewis. That's who Ashley was meeting. And we learned that YNWZZPK is Franny. And so that um, thread message thread must be when Franny and Ashley first met up. That must be how they contacted each other. Um, so yes, Lewis is the person that Ashley is meeting. Um, and so typing in here, Lewis... Yeah, that all fits. Okay, right. The messages line up. Plus, it makes sense. Lewis was fighting with Sebastian at the club earlier. The last chance he was yelling about what about was about exposing TFC. TFC completely ignored him, so he was going to tell Ash for revenge. But he got cold feet last minute and killed her to keep from her from exposing? Did we just crack the case? Did we just catch Ashley's killer? Oh my God, I got to bring this to Reggie. Well, Reggie just texted me as I wrote that. Hold up. You see this? Harold Richards campaign manager, Louis Vanzetti, found dead in apartment. Louis Vanzetti, manager of the Richards mayoral campaign, has died at the age of 34. According to the Copper Cliffs Police Department, Vanzetti was found dead in his apartment by his housemaid. Vanzetti was starting a new life after being imprisoned for vehicular manslaughter 10 years ago in what came to be known as the infamous Copper Cliffs car crash. After release, he was hired almost immediately by his longtime friend, mayoral candidate Harold Richards, who was also involved in the collision that sent Vanzetti to prison. The Richards campaign declined to comment on Vanzetti's death. A digital inf additional information about the nature of Vanzetti's death has not yet been released. More details to follow as the situation is investigated. So there's a shock. So huh, Lewis was Ashley's 
informant, and Lewis is dead. So, wait, where are we? Holy sh... I'm freaking out. This makes no sense. It wasn't Lewis? Am I in danger? Reggie is freaking too. I gotta get to them. This is too much. I gotta digest all this. I'll get back to you when I have a game plan. We still have our remaining suspects. All three of them both... All three of them look pretty suspicious at this point. I'm going to post Lewis wasn't the Coppercliff's car crash driver. See if that shakes anything out. So if we go to, um, what am I looking for? Nope, not that. Where is Ashley's blog? That's what I wanted. Huh. Okay, well, I can't find now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where Ashley's blog is now. Uh, where is, I mean, that's Ashley's blog. What am I doing? What is going on here? All right, we'll do it like this. Here we go. Here's the blog update. Louis Vanzetti was innocent, and now he's dead. We've been lied to for 10 years. Louis Vanzetti wasn't the driver of the infamous car crash, and now that the truth around the crash has come out, he's been found dead. Vanzetti's body was apparently discovered this morning by his maid. No details have been released, but the timing is interesting. My investigation into Ashley's death has led me to now be able to definitively say that TFC was the driver of the car the night that the night of the Copper Cliffs car crash. I know this sounds wild as far as what Copper Cliffs knows of the, that night. Thomas Ford Cross wasn't at the scene of the crime and Louis Vanzetti confessed outright to driving the car that killed King and Wilkes. But that's all a cover story orchestrated by our now mayor. That tragic night, TFC left the country club driving his friend Harold Richards' new car. Contrary to the police report, Lewis was a passenger along with Harold and the two women. When they crashed, TFC stopped a different car passing by, a carpool ride with Angel Silva as the driver. Evidence proves Angel Silva took TFC away from the crash site, suggesting Harold and Lewis both covered for their friend. Recent evidence has come to light that confirms Lewis was telling all to Ashley or was going to, and now he's dead too. Coppercliffs, be careful. There's a murderer out there, and they may have struck again. So, huh, that's all interesting. So here we have the photo that came in the box this month. And we see Lewis in the back seat with the two girls that passed away. We see TFC, whose face is white, 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 so we really can't see, like overexposed white. And then Harold on the other side. Um, and then here was the bow tie that was in Harold's safe deposit box. And here's the mask that TFC had in his hand in the photograph that was taken at the country club that night. So these two, all these things put together kind of indicate that, yeah, TFC was there. TFC is part of this. Lewis is dead. TFC was the person who killed those girls. Um, have no idea why Lewis and Harold covered for TFC at all no idea whatsoever but this is where we are episode five has come to a conclusion we have one episode left before we get to the ultimate solution as far as who may have killed ashley i'd like to thank everybody for tuning in if you have any comments questions criticisms or concerns please feel free to leave them in the comment area down below and as always i hope you all have a great week